After the Paris Air Show in June 2023, Airbus emerged as the winner securing 830 out of 1,100 orders from carriers. However, the situation reversed at the Dubai Air Show in November, where Boeing secured 295 aircraft orders, three times more than Airbus's 86. Notably, Airbus struggled with orders for the A350, especially the largest variant, the A350-1000. Even Emirates, known for preferring larger aircraft, ordered only the smaller A350-900 variant, purchasing 15 units. Ethiopian Airlines and Egypt Air also chose the A350-900 variant, ordering 11 and 10 units respectively. So, what exactly is wrong with the Airbus A350-1000 variant? And why do airlines reject it? Well, at first glance, Airbus's situation might not seem like a big deal since their sales are still strong, evidenced by the orders for the A350-900. However, when we look closer at the competition between Boeing and Airbus in terms of meeting airlines' demands, the picture changes. Airlines operating from a single large hub like Emirates and other Gulf carriers need bigger jets to maximize their hub capacity and keep aircraft arrivals and departures at manageable levels. The A350-1000's lack of orders could indicate a mismatch between what Airbus is offering and what these airlines need. This has significant implications for Airbus in the competitive landscape of the aviation industry. The fact is that besides Emirates, not many airlines can consistently maintain full capacity utilization of the large A380 aircraft throughout the entire year. Emirates also operates 123 Boeing 777-300ER aircraft, some of which are aging, meaning they will soon need replacements. To address this, Airbus designed the stretched A350-1000 to attract airlines looking for a replacement for their 777-300ERS. However, the lack of A350-1000 sales to Emirates indicates the airline may prefer Boeing's 777X as a replacement, which would be a significant loss for Airbus. The main issue with the A350-1000 that disappointed Emirates is related to engine efficiency, not safety. The A350 has two different engine options for its two variants, which is unusual. Typically, aircraft families share common engines across variants. Airbus initially planned to build the A350-800, a smaller model sharing engines with the A350-900, but this project was dropped as it conflicted with the larger A330neo. Without the A350-800, the A350 family now has only two variants, each using a different type of engine. This lack of commonality is problematic for airlines as it complicates maintenance. Each type of engine requires unique spare parts and specialized engineering training, increasing costs, and time for maintenance. Airlines prefer aircraft variants with common engines to streamline operations and reduce maintenance expenses. This engine issue likely contributed to Emirates' reluctance to order the A350-1000, making them more inclined to choose Boeing's 777X instead. However, it is important to note that different variants of an aircraft model, each with different capacities, typically require engines with slight internal differences to provide the proper thrust rating. The A350-1000 is heavier than the A350-900 due to its extra capacity, so it naturally needs a more powerful engine. The thrust achieved by the two variants of Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines powering the A350 is quite impressive. The two engine variants on the A350-900 and A350-1000 are named based on their thrust capability. The Trent XWB-84 used on the A350-900 generates 84,200 pounds or about 374.5 kilonewtons of thrust, while the Trent XWB-97 used on the A350-1000 generates up to 97,000 pounds or about 430 kilonewtons of thrust. Despite these impressive numbers, Emirates still doesn't favor the A350-1000 due to engine-related concerns. Besides the lack of commonality, the discussion around these engines has become a focal point of contention, particularly between Emirates and Rolls-Royce. In an interview, Tim Clark raised significant concerns about the demanding service requirements and the time-on-wing performance of the A350-1000's engines. 
Time on wing refers to the duration an engine can operate before needing maintenance. Clark claimed that the Trent XWB 97 engines fall significantly short of the expected duration, operating for only a quarter of the anticipated cycle. He expected the XWB 97 engine to remain in service for a minimum of 2,000 cycles. This performance shortfall led Clark to label the engines as defective, creating a stir in the aviation industry. Rolls-Royce has since addressed these concerns, defending the integrity and reliability of their engine technology. Nonetheless, these issues have influenced Emirates' decision not to order the A350-1000, potentially steering them toward Boeing's 777X instead. The engine manufacturer, Rolls-Royce, promptly stepped in to defend their product while acknowledging existing issues that required attention and resolution. Yann McDonald, the chief customer officer at Rolls-Royce, attributed the challenges to the harsh climate conditions in Dubai, characterized by high temperatures and sandy environments. He emphasized that these challenges were not unique to Rolls-Royce. Other engine manufacturers like CFM and Pratt and Whitney have faced similar issues with their new Leap One and geared turbofan engines, which also experience relatively short time on wing intervals due to adverse climate conditions. In response, these companies have been diligently working to extend the on-wing times of their engines, a process that involves gradual modifications and enhancements to internal components to improve durability and performance in demanding operational environments. During their dispute with Emirates, Rolls-Royce highlighted that Emirates would not be the first to operate the A350-1000 in hot and dusty conditions. Two other Gulf Airlines, Etihad and Qatar Airways, have already taken delivery of the aircraft and kept them in service. Etihad has acquired and is utilizing 5A 350-1000s, while Qatar Airways has 24 in operation with an additional 18 on order. Both airlines operate the A350-1000 under the same harsh climate conditions that Tim Clark mentioned yet they have made barely any complaints. Another factor contributing to Emirates' soon unease is the change in policy within Rolls-Royce. Previously, engine maintenance contracts were negotiated separately, and recently Rolls-Royce has changed their policy to transfer the liability of maintaining a faulty engine from the manufacturer to the carrier. This policy change means that Emirates would be responsible for the maintenance costs of the engines, adding another layer of concern regarding the adoption of the A350-1000. This term has been entirely reversed from its previous arrangement with Qatar Airways and Etihad, where Rolls-Royce would cover the expenses for any additional maintenance required by its engines. The reason for this modification is the impact of the pandemic on long-haul travel prompting Rolls-Royce to ensure profitability and increased margins through these contracts. However, these new terms did not satisfy Emirates. The failed negotiations led Emirates to place a backup order with Boeing, despite their previous criticisms of the 777X's extensive development delays. This situation was a setback for Airbus, which could have taken advantage of Boeing's delays, especially since the A350 is already operational. You might wonder why the A350 relies on just one engine manufacturer. Historically, aircraft families like the A330 and many Boeing models offered multiple engine options. However, recent trends show manufacturers favoring single-engine models to simplify addressing engine issues. This is why the Boeing 777X is equipped with only one engine choice, the General Electric GE9X, and even the subsequent iteration of the original 777 model featured only the GE90. Rolls-Royce's future strategy involves improving the time on wing for their wide-body engines using technology from their ultra-fan concept, which is set to replace the Trent series. This focus on enhancing engine performance aims to address the concerns raised by airlines like Emirates and improve overall engine reliability and efficiency. This strategy aligns with Rolls-Royce's goal to quadruple profit margins in the next five years.
a development Airbus would welcome as it would help maintain A350-1000 sales in harsh climates. Additionally, Airbus is developing a new freighter variant, the A350F, with air travel on the rise, especially for environmentally friendly wide-body planes like the A350, these aircraft are expected to play a crucial role in the aviation industry. Airports worldwide are working to reduce flight congestion and carbon emissions while accommodating many passengers. As airlines aim to upgrade their fleets with eco-friendly high-capacity aircraft, Airbus is likely to receive a significant number of new orders for the A350, including the A350-1000 model. This trend reflects the growing importance of sustainability and efficiency in aviation, suggesting a positive outlook for Airbus's future sales. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time.